Welcome to Hendricks Chapel. My name is Brian Conkle. I serve as Dean of Hendricks Chapel, and as we begin, I acknowledge with respect the Onondaga Nation, fire keepers of the Haudenosaunee, the indigenous people on whose ancestral lands Syracuse University now stands. It is really good for us all to be here. It's good to be here today and together to enjoy this latest installment of the Malmgren Concert Series here at Hendricks Chapel. Thank you to all for being here. The Malmgren Concert Series of Hendricks Chapel is made possible through a generous gift from Esther and Vincent Malmgren. We give thanks to the Malmgren family for making it possible to bring world-class musicians here to Hendricks Chapel at Syracuse University to collaborate with our students and to bring some much needed joy to our world. Today is the second of many concerts that we plan to host throughout this academic year. So I encourage you to join us in the months ahead with dates and details loaded, located in your program and also on our website at chapel.syr.edu. Today we're pleased to introduce our program it's meant to be a gift to each and every one of us. It features exciting new music from a diverse set of composers and compositional styles, a collaboration with the Hendricks Chapel Choir and two extraordinary performers, organist Rhonda Sider Edgington and percussionist Carolyn Keeble. This will be an engaging program of new music by Asian and indigenous composers, including the world premiere of Connor Chi's Four Directions. For the sake of some background, the idea for this new piece emerged when Rhonda and our very own Syracuse University organist, Ann Laver, attended the 2022 conference at the University of Michigan, a conference that was created and centered on diversity and inclusion in and through music. Rhonda, Ann, and the Syracuse University organ students who attended the conference were especially impressed with composer Connor Chi's compelling music and his advocacy for indigenous composers. In his remarks about the conference, Chi encouraged institutions to go beyond land acknowledgement statements and to take action in support of indigenous creatives. And so taking this call to action into account and with support from the Malmgren Fund, Hendricks Chapel at Syracuse University was able to commission Chi to write a new work for organ and percussion to be premiered in this space. We are so pleased that our guests will share this work today. And also for all in attendance to know after the program, our artists will be in the entryway of the chapel uh, with CDs and opportunities for conversation. So we do invite you to stay after to purchase some CDs and to uh, visit with our guests. And so with excitement and great joy today, I welcome you all to Hendricks Chapel and I invite all of us to now welcome Thunder and Wind.
All right, good afternoon. Thanks so much for joining us and for the choir especially. We're very excited to share this piece as a collaborative piece in a, a couple more on our program. I was supposed to talk immediately after I played that piece and that's always a very unrealistic idea if you want to actually hear full sentences. So I need a little reoxygenation so I can uh, share with you. Uh, the first piece was a combination of two pieces. I'm not sure if some of our local and regional taiko players may recognize Utsu Hachijo, which was the first piece that starts Don Sukon Kon, Don Sukon Kon, Don Karakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakak
correct way, so I'd, I'd rather not mispronounce it, but what he did share was that, that each one has a, a, a feeling to it. It has like a melodic prosody and the syllables have a particular rhythm. Um, it re reminded me a lot of um, what, I, what I did study about Mandarin when I was trying to learn a bit more in, in my travels in China and the, the prosody and the very specific movements of those sounds. And so each, um, each word when pronounced in the Diné kind of uh, language would kind of be reflected in the way that he created and transcribed the rhythm for the percussion. So it's, it's interrelated also in his compositional style. And we're using frame drums. So a lot of the music we're presenting today is certainly an unusual hybrid. I never would have thought to put organ and taiko together. I never would have thought I wanted to play music with an organist as a percussionist. I, I didn't find it overly to be captivating until Rhonda came to me with these um, just amazing pieces, the one that's at the end of the program today, is like it's a remarkable journey into what's possible in our imaginations and within the sonic universe, particularly of the organ, what it can do when we really just, we kind of let ourselves sit back and experience the broad bandwidth of sounds and sonorities and just the feelings that can be evoked by these pieces is quite tremendous and some really just fantastic Japanese composers whose work is very seldom championed in the States. So also a, a real honor to be able to share their pieces with, with you and they are so appreciative too. They're always emailing Rhonda and they're so grateful that you know, you're know you championing this piece and bringing it to the Western community. So this is Connor Chi's piece for you now from the four directions with the frame drum and organ.
So, so we've played one other piece by Hina Sakamoto, a, a living Japanese composer, and um, we've enjoyed the rhythmic vitality of, of both of her pieces. But um, Carolyn and I were just deciding that we programmed entirely too many intense pieces on this program. We're going to be dead afterwards. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed that because it is really fun to play. And this next piece is very cool too. Um, the composer... Chen Yi was born in China, and she studied classical music until the Cultural Revolution when her family was sent out into the, culture, into the countryside where she learned um, lots of Chinese folk music, which she was very taken with. She is now um, a professor of composition in the U.S. in Kansas City and internationally well-known, and she loves to incorporate Chinese folk music into her pieces. Um, this piece was originally written for Chinese bass drum, organ, and choir. Um, and we don't think that there's been another performance of it with organ. So you guys get to hear a special treat. Um, one thing that's really interesting about this piece is there's no text. So if you're thinking, I don't quite understand what they're saying, it's because they're not saying any words. Yeah, <laughs> they're, they're doing a lots of kind of interesting um, rhythmic things, the choir. and. Um, I think you're gonna love it.
So, so as Carolyn alluded to, the, the piece we're going to end with is, is kind of what started this journey of Carolyn and mine uh, playing pieces together. I heard this many, many years ago, and I had no idea what taiko drums were, but I was in a big cathedral, and the organ started, and then someone was banging on this gigantic drum, and I was like, what is that? That's crazy. Um, and it was a piece by a living Japanese composer, um, and uh, through a whole series of events, I tracked down the score, which was kind of a, an adventure in, to itself. And then I had to find a player crazy enough to play it with me. Um, so that's how Carolyn and I met. And um, we've played this for a lot of audiences, and I, people find it very powerful. It's very evocative. And what I tell people is that you don't exactly have to understand what's going on, right? You just kind of jump on for the ride and let yourself be engulfed by sound because this is all about kind of a soundscape. There's, there's three sections to this piece. And, um, you know, in Shinto shrines, um, the god of thunder is depicted with a taiko drum for obvious reasons. And I think it's very clever that um, the organ has become the god of wind because obviously wind is what powers the organ. So in the first movement, it starts off with just kind of a rumble of, of the organ. All you can hear is the lowest sounds rumbling. And it, the rumble starts to move up. It starts to get a little bit louder. You can't even exactly understand what's going on, but you can feel it, right? You can feel it in your, in your stomach. Um, and it's basically this gigantic crescendo, so growing in, in pitches and in volume, and um, that's kind of the whole first movement. And the second movement is totally different. Carolyn isn't playing so much on the drums, she's playing more on the woodblock and the cymbals, and um, we like to think of this as Japanese love to depict things like, um, oh, yeah, woodblocks, like to depict uh, things like crickets and frogs, so it's kind of a, a foresty kind of sound. Um, and I'm doing some weird chirping things, so maybe birds. So you can kind of have that kind of soundscape in your, in your head for the second movement. So second movement is a very different kind of sound. The third movement starts, again, very statically. And again, it's kind of a big crescendo. Um, the third movement is really rhythmic. So the third movement is, is, is a little more fun in that way. It gets really rhythmic. And the rhythmic intensity kind of grows throughout. So at first, it again starts really slow, and then it kind of starts to, starts to kind of rock. Um, and then Carolyn gets to play a big solo on the Odaiko, which is the huge drum. And, and then we end. And um, Oh, yes, I shouldn't forget to say we brought CDs with us, and we, musicians hate to take their CDs home with them. So if you have a CD player and listen to CDs or know someone that does, you can talk to us afterwards. And we have credit card swipers and cash and Venmo and all the things. Um, we don't have any CDs of us together. You'll have to go on YouTube to listen to that. But we do have our individual things. So thank you so much for coming, and I hope you enjoy the final piece. Someone did ask earlier what the instruments are, so this this very many notes on the paper, so I do apologize that it exists, but you're welcome to <laughs> come up afterwards and see the instruments. So the larger the drums we call the odaiko, and then the central voice drum that you've been hearing the most so far today is the uh, chudaiko or miyadaiko, played sometimes more in naname style like the opening piece or betta style in this ensemble piece. And then the smaller drums are the shime daiko. So in a traditional uh, context of a taiko piece, oftentimes the shime daiko is playing what we call the ji or the jiuchi or the background beat that kind of functions as a bit of, like the composer, uh, the conductor of the piece rather. So the shime and this piece are graduated in pitch and create something more of like a taiko set. So this was, this was something that a lot of players started experimenting with like uh, some of the Japanese jazz drum set artists wanted to have like a dual between a taiko set and then a traditional like western drum set to see you know could these two worlds inter interface so um, it's been a common thing and now it's quite popular in a lot of the repertoire that's played and certainly solo artist Kaoru Watanabe out of Brooklyn and many players are using a taiko set such as the one in this composition so I'll show you a shime and then we'll play the piece 